We've now derived our investment demand curve and we saw that there was an inverse relationship between the interest rate and planned investment. We can use that information to derive an IS curve. And we'll start off by looking at what happens to aggregate demand when the interest rate changes. And then we can um, define what an IS curve is. So let's assume this is our initial aggregate demand curve and it intersects our 45 degree line. Remember that's a reference line, it shows you all points where aggregate demand equals income. So to start with, our aggregate demand curve intersects our 45 degree line here. Let's call it Y0, so we'll call this our initial equilibrium. And our intercept to begin with is say A bar, all autonomous spending, the only difference now, we saw that when we took the full version of investment, we have to subtract BI from that. Now, if our starting point is, is that if the interest rate were to fall, how does this affect our equilibrium? Well, we know from investment that planned investment will rise. So as the interest rate falls, planned investment rises, and that causes our whole aggregate demand curve to shift upward. There it is. Let's call it AD1. The whole curve shifts upwards and we get a new equilibrium point where that intersects a 45 degree line and we'll call that E1. So as interest rate has dropped, investments risen, aggregate demands increased and we get a new higher level of equilibrium income, Y1. We've moved from there to there. Let's take a look at what's happened to our intercept. What causes the intercept to rise? We'll call this total autonomous spending minus BI1. So the only thing that has changed here is the interest rate. Let's say that initially it was 2% and now it changes to 1%. How does it change the intercept? So let's assume autonomous expenditure is 60 and B is 20. So we substitute in here for the interest rate being 2%. So we'll get 60 minus 20 for B and I is 2. 60 minus 20 times 2 or 60 minus 40. And we're going to get a value of 20. So initially our intercept say is 20 to give an example. After the change in interest rate, nothing else is changing. You're still going to have 60 total autonomous spending. And B is still going to be 20. The only difference is that the interest rate went from 2% to say 1%. So you're going to get 60 minus 20 times 1 or 60 minus 20, you're going to get a value of 40. So you can see that how when the interest rate falls from 2 to 1%, our intercept increases in value. And that makes sense because we um, are subtracting the term with little i. So the smaller it is, the less we subtract in. So our intercept rises. But what we are really interested in is looking at the relationship between interest rate and income that's associated with these equilibria in the goods market. So we can trace down from this diagram, we can trace down to a new set of axes because we've got the same thing on the, on the horizontal axis. We've got income or output. So let's trace that level of income down. Y1, trace this level of income down and call it Y0 to begin with. So initially, we're looking at what happens when our interest rate changes. Initially, our interest rate was 2%. And at 2%, we know that our level of equilibrium income was Y0. Y0, okay? 2%, there's your equilibrium in that market. We'll call it E0 again. What happens when the interest rate falls to, say, 1%? We can see that as the interest rate fell, investment rose, aggregate demand um, shifted up and income increased. So at the new equilibrium, Y1 is associated with that lower interest rate of 1%. That was our other equilibrium point. And if we join these two things together, put a line through them, we get our IS curve. And what does an IS curve show you? 
combinations of the interest rate and income or output that clears the goods market or that is associated with equilibrium in the goods market. So if you need to remember how to derive it, your starting point, a good place to start is to think, okay, start off drawing an aggregate demand curve and think, what happens when the interest rate falls? Interest rate falls, investment rises and AD shifts. And that'll help you to remember how to derive the IS.